get-togethers, everybody. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's crazy. So, yeah, this Ooh. is uh, a new thing. And mm. I would, this is going to be uh, pretty interesting to see how this all pans out. But it seems like what they're trying to do is put a kibosh to people um, making an income off of trading or selling firearms without owning the business license and the ATF um, FFL, FFL approval mm -hmm. to do so. So to legally sell and trade and deal in firearms and make a living at it, you do need to have a federal firearms license. That's an FFL, that's what we have here. We have a store mm -hmm. front where we buy, sell and trade and deal in firearms. It's how we make money. Mm -hmm. um, and we have paid for that right. <laughs> and right. we pay yearly for that right. Yeah, I, we've talked about the paperwork you do. It's ridiculous. Yes, it's uh, ridiculous. It, it comes with a lot of paperwork, a lot of responsibility. And a lot of that responsibility is on our side of the counter. Mm -hmm. We have to care to do a good job. Um, on the other hand, for years, it's been totally legal and fine to trade firearms, sell, pass them amongst your friends or whatever, co-workers, and, or, or trade them around at gun shows. Uh, so this is, sounds like what they're going to do is it's going to stop just regular Joes, um, from just opening up a table and selling their personal collections mm -hmm. there and making any sort of living wage off of it. Mm. So uh, I'm really curious. Yeah, you know, because uh, what's the date today? It's the 12th? Today's the 12th. Okay, so they said 30 days from the 11th, which would be like around the 10th of May-ish. Yeah. What a weird day. Like, like, why not May 1st or June 1st? But yeah, because gun shows, you know, I don't even, it's hard to talk about gun shows because... They just aren't the same as they were five years ago, you know, at all. So, you know. Still never uh, been. Really? Oh, they <laughs> used to be amazing. Now, there's are some, like the one down in Tulsa is great. And they, they have been improving to the degree, you know, because there was a while, you know, where like there'd be 80 booths and like four of them have guns, you know. Yeah. Um, one of them has ammo. The rest are like windows for your home and. You know, or just magazines only, or uh, backpacks, or toys, or popcorn, or so, you know, just really bizarre. But it, it has gotten better. But I would say it felt like it was about 50 50 um, FFL versus private collectors, is yeah. what they call themselves. Yeah. Because I would say, out of the, I don't know, however many guns I've bought at a gun show, um, I'd say at least half of them. Uh, you just said, oh, I'll take that one. They're like 600 bucks. And you give them 600 bucks and they hand you the gun. And you walk out. Yeah. Um, which has been legal. So my question would be really like, well, okay, so if you already, you know, if you already don't have enough booze with guns as it is and you take half of them away, you know, what are gun shows anymore? So you know? gun shows were meant to be a way I, I for what it sounds like they're trying to do is they're trying to make the gun shows um, for people with FFLs. And there are a lot of people that do not have a storefront mm -hmm. that people can shop the merchandise at their federal firearms license dealer because there are still a lot of gun dealers in the United States that have a full time job elsewhere and work part time on an FFL out of their home. Mm -hmm. They don't have the overhead, the insurance, the utilities. Yeah. yeah, we mm -hmm. all know them. I mm -hmm. mean, they do exist. And they come in here, they send us customers. Um, we send customers to them from time to time, depending on, you know, who they are. Oh, yeah, you're friends with so-and-so. He's friends with your neighbor over here. Yeah, your neighbor has the FFL. Go ahead. It's, it's not going to hurt us any if you guys want to want to deal with that. The downside to home FFLs is that you don't have regular business hours and you don't always have somebody there to answer the phone during those business hours. 
you have that person that has a full-time job elsewhere and cannot answer gun questions when they are on the clock at their regular job and you have questions about a shipment that's coming in or a firearm you ordered and you want to have those answered well you can't always get in contact with those mm -hmm. dealers but the gun show is a way for those dealers to bring their merchandise um, and have a temporary storefront mm -hmm. for a weekend. And that a makes day. so much sense. Yeah, yeah. And and they are trading legally on mm -hmm. their license, um, and they are making a second income at it. They have paid for the right to do that through their license. Is the guys that are the private collectors and still wish to sell or deal in firearms and earn a decent wage at it because let's mm -hmm. we'll be honest there are these guys that go there and and they do make quite a bit of money mm -hmm. um but you you're they're gonna have to keep track keep records of all of their firearms now and there will need to be background checks done mm -hmm. on those and they're really trying to get away from people selling to individuals who cannot legally own firearms sure. and that's what the background that's ultimately check is what it's coming down to yeah. is because the ffl can run a background check a private collector does not yeah you know. exactly um the what i saw is of course it's the department of justice that's enforcing this um they estimated there were twenty eight thousand private collectors in america selling uh, gun shows. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Um, it's a made up number, just like all statistics. I don't know how they'd know. Uh, probably. <laughs> that's, that's their number. Right uh, yeah, they, they've yeah, given you a number. number. They threw out there. So, uh, yeah. so there, yeah. there might be more. There might be uh, less. There might be a significant difference between the number that's been posted uh, and the actual. Eh. Actual number. Oh, yeah, or I don't know. Who so. knows? Yeah, that'll be interesting. I, I really have not been a fan of gun shows for a long time unless I went somewhere else like not around here for sure um it just it's been really just every time I go I kind of want my money back yeah you know like you, I pay 14 bucks to get in can I have that back please <laughs> you don't feel like you got 14 dollars worth of enjoyment no. or entertainment no. out of it no there, there's 14 dollars to be better spent uh, elsewhere than than going there yeah I, yeah. I could see that because it used to be that it would be, uh, you know, like there'd be, and I guess that's the problem I have with getting rid of the private collectors too, is that those were, they were the ones that had all the cool stuff, like the old stuff that not, cause the gun dealers usually had like, you know, here's your choices of Glocks and some Smith and Wessons and some SIGs and you know, the normal stuff that you can get anywhere. Um, but it was always those guys that you're like, oh, I've never seen one of those. You know, you could always find that kind of, and just, I don't know if that really exists much anymore. You know? It's, it does exist. And it exists in the homes of these private FFL dealers, mm -hmm. uh, that these home FFLs that don't make it to the gun shows or that maybe only make it to one show a year. And it may not even be the same show in the state where you live in. Um, these guys sometimes will pack up and travel to a big show. Like you said, the Oklahoma show is a big mm -hmm. one. But um, forcing an individual, a private collector, to do business on an FFL is forcing accountability to some degree mm -hmm. on that dealer. You have to be responsible for the merchandise you have coming in, which they already are, mm -hmm. but you also have to dispose of it to its new owner in an appropriate and safe manner, making sure that that person who will be owning that firearm can legally pass their background check. You, there's some due diligence mm -hmm. you have to to do there. Just make sure that, yeah, you don't you don't want to send your babies into <laughs> homes where they will be mistreated or to people who cannot yeah. legally own them. So you do kind of I see the the point there. Um, well, it's you know I, it's it's an interesting kind of I'm glad you're, we're actually kind of heading this direction with it because it's hard you know like oftentimes when I bring up you know this idea you know well you can go to a gun show and you, you know you can go buy a gun you don't need to pass a background check like that's what they're referring to and people yeah. say well you can't do that i'm like well yeah you can't <laughs> like like as much as you'd not like to not believe that yeah, the guys you can do that like i i don't know how many guns i've purchased that way personally 
you know, it, it's because if it was a private collector, you don't have to pass a background check. And and I think, you know, I, it's a, it's important that people recognize that that actually is a thing. That is, you it's know, a it thing. really is a thing. It happens. People will say, no, it's not. Because when I went to the gun show, I had to pass a background check. It's like, well, that's because you bought it from a guy who had an FFL. Yeah, you got it from a you licensed know? dealer. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't buy, buy it from, it from an private. unlicensed individual. Mm. And there are guys that will walk in <laughs> and they zip tie your guns or whatever that you're mm. taking in to buy, sell, and trade. And before they even make it to a table, another um, attendee of the gun show, is that a, I haven't had one of those since, hey, but I got one of, the, do you want to swap some guns and some cash right here while we're standing in line to get into mm -hmm. the gun show? You know, so that. I've that, had that whole happen multiple times. So, yeah. so yeah. And Often. You, and you don't Often. know. and Because and <laughs> if I buy a gun, I'm carrying it around. Exactly. I'd be like, you want to sell that? <laughs> I, like, I, you already gave like. X number of dollars, and here they're going to pay you four hundred dollars more uh -huh. than what you already spent on it. Yeah, why not? Easy come, easy go, and an extra four hundred dollars, I can find something else. So, yeah, um, a lot of trading goes on, but this way, this is making sure that the buyers are um, legally able to obtain firearms. The downside background checks are not instantaneous for mm -hmm. everyone if you are one of the wonderful rare individuals who happens to just get a good to go as soon as we hit send on that digital form that we transmit to the fbi um then hooray for you you are rare <laughs> you you are the exception and you are not the rule most normal, regular people will have some sort of wait time. Okay. Whether that wait time is 30 minutes, 45 minutes, three business days, five business days, 10 business days, or in some cases, um, large box stores, and I have heard this multiple times, there are large box stores that sell firearms, and if you do not come back with an immediate good to go, you don't get that firearm at all. They don't charge you for it, but they still will not give you that firearm, even after a Brady transfer date has passed or anything like that. They just That's just a store policy. So I do hear stories about people going, well, if I have to pass a background check, they're never going to give me the gun. Mm -hmm. And then my question usually is, well, is that because you have a felony or warrant? No, it's just because it takes too long and I don't want to wait the 30 days or whatever. It's like, be patient. Yeah. I can't. I can't tell you anymore. Be patient. Yeah. Uh, this is. We are more and more. I'm seeing people spoiled by the privilege of same day delivery, same day grocery delivery, same day Amazon <clears throat> delivery. You want it? You put the order in. You give them your money. You walk out with it that same yeah, day. We are spoiled with that. We are very, very spoiled. spoiled. <laughs> Do we realize how spoiled uh, we are? No, <coughs> no. Because if one place doesn't have it, we have twelve other options to mm -hmm. try. Mm -hmm. So we are we're very spoiled and. Um, seeing some people take that sense of entitlement uh, a little too far. Like, I can do what I want. I don't need the license to do this. Um, I, I don't need to make sure that these are going to good homes, that, that the owners can pass a background check. Well, if you're doing business and you want to do it legally, you got to follow the same rules we follow. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you have the whole store that goes with it or whether you're working out of your house, and have another job on the side. Well, and if you look at the ATF, it's alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. And explosives. And explosives. <laughs> um, I can't sell alcohol without a license. No, you and I can't. I can't sell cigarettes without a license. No, you, you can't. Know? And I definitely can't sell explosives without a license. No. Um, now, I will say this, though, that it is also for profit on selling guns, you know, so for, for example, profit. yeah, so if like, let's say you have a relative that passed and you got like 50 guns that you're stuck with, you can sell those as long as it's not a business, you're not showing a regular 
income. income yeah. And of, and the, yeah. the way to do that, um, if you do not, if you are trying to sell a collection of firearms that you have inherited, the appropriate way to handle that is to talk with licensed dealers. If you yourself are not a licensed dealer, to talk with other licensed dealers and to see about consignment or an outright sale to that dealer of that mm. collection. And that is how that will legally be taken care of. Because if you yourself um, do not have the paperwork um, to do background checks, Form 4473, and you don't have the NICS number to call it in or the login to use their computer system and do that background check, you need to make sure that that collection of guns goes through a channel that will do background checks for the new owners on those guns. So that is mm -hmm. consignment to a dealer of your choice or an outright sale to a dealer of your choice. And then that dealer will make sure that each of those firearms leaves with a background check for the new owner. Um, it puts the old owner off the hook for anything that the <laughs> new owner does with it. It's just a dead stop <coughs> right then and there. Um, from the time you pass that background check and you take possession of that serial number, anything that happened to it in the decades previous never comes back on you. And likewise, if you were the owner of that firearm formerly, you do not have to worry about anything that happens from the day you drop it off at that dealer then on. That is none of your concern and anything that happens to that firearm from that point on, it's not coming back on you either. So well, and that's good to know because it is one thing just to release a bunch of guns that were in your name yeah. to random people out in the world. Like that's pretty risky. It, it that's is pretty risky. It, it really is. It if somebody's a... buying a gun without a background check, there's probably a reason for it. They're going to do something with that gun, and then when they find that gun, it's going to go back to you. I mean, you can just <laughs> there is historical record of how awful this goes for people that are dealing without a license and dealing irresponsibly. If you don't make people pass a background check for those firearms, bad stuff happens and it all comes back on you and your family and they all have to deal with the fallout of it just because mm -hmm. you were like, oh, careless once, eh, no big deal. Just this one time. It's, it's, you, know, you kind of got to take responsibility for those. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to take responsibility for those actions. And so absolutely no more private party sales would be kind of making people deal a little more responsibly hopefully theoretically well, let me ask you this is there been any um because of the doj doing this thing with the you know in 30 days uh saying that can't no longer private sales um has there been any change in the gun stores like are there people selling their guns more like because like now i can like let's say i had a bunch of guns and i was going to go do, sell them here but i can't so now i'm going to sell them here. like is there anything that's changing in here because of that ask me again in 30 days okay <laughs> ask me in 60 and ask me in 90 um because this just came through yesterday mm. where we're just unpacking all of this today and the ramifications so as of yet there isn't really a change, but I'm sure we will see something at some point. I mean, before the end of the year, I'm sure. And the closer we get toward the end of the year, it is an election year and things go mm -hmm. all screwy. Yeah, they Every do. election yeah. year, things get screwy. Hang on for the ride. Exactly. <laughs> We're here for it. Yeah. Buckle your safety belts, ladies and gentlemen. Right here, now, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for a roller coaster <laughs> ride. So and enjoy it while it's peaceful, while it's calm. And um, then after that, I guess we buckle down and I'm going to have a lot more customers that will be brand new federal firearms licensed dealers. So <laughs> I'm very excited for you all out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll be here for everybody else if you need us. So right. your FFLs are still here. We love you. So. That's right. That's right. Well, Maggie, gosh, thank you for this information. An interesting talk. Uh, we'll talk about it again in 30 days. Yeah. Oh, this, this is going to be fun. This is, there's going to be some crazy happening for there the rest of the year on this. That's right. That's right. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hey, you are very welcome. Thanks for joining us Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Until next time. All right. We'll see you, everybody. Bye-bye.